Hi there. This is Dennis Velko with Out Bureau. Thank you so much for joining another episode of Out Voices, where we bring you interesting conversations with LGBT entrepreneurs, professionals, and community leaders from around the world. And today we are joined by Dr. Marcus Lowe from Berlin, Germany. Thank you so much for joining us today, Marcus. Thank you. Thank you, Dennis, for giving me the opportunity to have this little talk with you and yeah, to raise some nice items during this little discussion, I hope. Oh, well, absolutely. And for our viewers and listeners, Marcus is a core team member of the Queer Staff Network of Berlin. So we're going to be learning about uh, that uh, very interesting and uh, great project. Uh, so Marcus, give us a little bit of background of your career and talking specifically, uh, we'll, we'll transition into talking specifically about the core sta uh, Queer Staff Network of Berlin. Yeah, the Queer Staff Network, and let's call it a network of the networks. So in every city, you have a variety of corporates of big or smaller businesses and wherever you, you, you look, uh, you have LGBT, you have people with LGBTIQ background. So they have their networks within their company. So it's very inside orientated, but it's also orientated towards their customers. Our idea was to create something which uh, brings together all these networks in one network. So to, to raise a voice throughout our German capital for LGBTIQ items, uh, ideas, uh, suggestions uh, within the business community. So there is uh, people from yeah, Deutsche Bahn, where I work, uh, from Bayer, you know this from the US, St. Louis, uh, with Monsanto together. This is Deutsche Bank. Uh, this is oh, our transport company here, Berliner Verkehrsbetriebe. So Berlin Transport Association. Um, this is uh, the Waterfall Company, or the Swedish company. Companies is uh, from the energy sector, but it's also a lot of smaller companies. It is also the German army, though the Bundeswehr, queer Bundeswehr we have. They are also uh, part of this network. I think it's about 60 companies uh, who have joined within this uh, network. So normally yeah. we do meetings uh, three to four every year. Now, now it's more virtual than uh, a physical meeting. Also with uh, COVID-19, we try to head on and to place our items within the general public discussion media here in Berlin. So, so let me kind of recap and make sure that folks are kind of getting this because I, whenever I ran across your profile and saw this, that is really what kind of captured my attention is that yes, uh, uh, lots of employers have employee resource groups for, for many different kinds of uh, employees, subsets of employees. And uh, for those awesome companies out there, they have employee resource groups for their LGBTQ employees. So, so there's the employee internal to the employer network for employees. And then the uh, Queer Staff Network of Berlin that's where you guys or, or several of you got together and said, hey, you know, perhaps we also should network with each other. Yeah, that's it. Across different employers. Yeah, that's it. And this is not only the case for uh, meeting LGBT and doing LGBT politics, but it's a big networking. It's, it's just a, a business network. So of people, uh, knowing people from Coca-Cola, meeting together with people from Bosch, uh, from uh, American Express Berlin and so on. So you have exchange between each other. Uh, you do uh, best practice and it's best practice for LGBTIQ representation within the companies, but it's beyond this uh, also on phew, on your uh, pure, pure professional stuff, whatever you do in, in accounting or IT or whatever. Oh, okay. now this is the idea. This is so we. What we just focusing at the moment. This is the establishment of a business chamber so to get all these uh, self-employed small businesses uh, within to this professional business network 
Mm -hmm. uh, but at the moment, it's uh, just uh, an employee orientated network. So we are um, probably all of us uh, are employed at uh, whatever company. But our okay. idea is to make it even bigger with the employers, uh, well, innkeepers, landlords, with, uh, with uh, shopkeepers and so on. Very so interesting. Yes, because in our first introduction call that we had, I was very, I, I guess, surprised when you mentioned that in all of Germany, that there is one um, LGBT Chamber of Commerce. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, well, well what city again is that located Cologne. in? Cologne. Cologne. So, yeah. there's so there's one LGBT Chamber of Commerce in all of Germany in Cologne. And, yeah. I, and as I recall, you guys are kind of in conversation about bridging that and bringing it essentially come some of the concepts of, of a chamber of commerce to berlin but now as i'm hearing you say utilizing the work that you're already doing uh within the queer staff network and kind of expanding that yeah uh, and, and i could see a lot of wonderful benefits in doing that because you are already within these large corporations larger corporations and then working within those corporations to create policies, for example, in and around inclusive suppliers. Yeah. So now then be able to say, well, not only are, uh, did we, do we have, or did we just enact uh, a, a supplier diversity for LGBTQ businesses, yet, oh, by the way, here are our local uh, businesses to yeah, Berlin and Germany and Europe and and I know Susan and Frank and Joseph and Peter and so forth so uh, so it's a it's a great way to kind of help fast track those LGBT uh, businesses into your larger organization yeah this is uh, to broaden the supplier device of diversity well, this is a, a perspective from the corporates, but also to give new development opportunities to our businesses. So what, what I feel is that they are restrained in, in some way. They are limited to, oh yes, I do some, some fees, I do some uh, um, bars, but that is not the big growth behind. So you're limited, you cannot develop. And one thing is clear, it's missing the opportunities, it's missing the networks. So through the networks, you get opportunities, you get transparency, and this is missing. And this is from my perspective, the big challenge for the LGBTIQ businesses. So to be, uh, to be recognized so there is something oh there is something somebody additional who can deliver something for me but also to give them the opportunity to learn about what do the corporates need so often um, the the things they offer uh, they do not fit to that what the big companies need but they could adjust their uh, business uh, cases and then there would be the big opportunity to jump in and to deliver and to grow and uh, to uh, give the opportunity for additional um, employment and so on. So I think this is a, a big win-win opportunity we have. But as you said at the beginning, so in Germany we have this very first chamber and this is now a new uh, movement within Europe, so it's, um, yeah, there is this East meets West uh, Association, it's uh, active around Europe, and they sponsor uh, the introduction of these um, business chambers, and I, so I'm in some way linked uh, to Miami, and I learned there how important it is for the community to have this linkage, this business linkage within uh, the general business community. 
so beyond the LGBT and how this is possible to develop or what opportunity this offers to develop LGBT uh, uh, small businesses in favor for yeah the big players on the market and both sides uh, take their profit of it. I, I think that is amazing. And so it, it's, you know, sometimes my perspective and therefore I would say a lot of people's perspective of chambers of commerce are generally the smaller local businesses. Mm. You know, at least here in the United States, when someone thinks of a chamber of commerce, they typically think of realtors and local car dealerships and local plumbers and, and electricians and things like that. So this model, um, and now, you know, the national, for example, here in the United States, we have local LGBT chambers of commerce plus we have a national LGBT yeah. Chamber of Commerce. Now, at that level, they have some corporate sponsors um, uh, that, you know, that I'm aware of. You can see it on their website. But what I am super, super intrigued about this model that you're doing is having uh, on multiple levels, okay? So let me break this down for all of you out there. So you have, again, repeating, all of these employees, all of these employee, LGBT employee resource groups got together. Yeah. Okay. Now you are collaborating amongst each other, sharing yep. best practices That's with it. each yep. other so that, you know, if one company is maybe not as mature on their LGBT inclusive policies and benefits, if they join this group, called Queer Staff Network of Berlin, now you can support each other uh, cross company. I think that is frankly revolutionary. I think it's very interesting what you're doing. Then taking that down to uh, uh, expanding it into reaching into the, the smaller business and being, being a liaison where you yep. are working with the smaller LGBT owned businesses, educating them on the needs for the products and services that your employers, which are the big boys and big gals of the world uh, need, and then helping them through, you know, what can you adapt to in your business to be a good fit? And then hand holding them, making introductions, giving them advice, being a champion for them. I am blown away. I think that is absolutely phenomenal. And so all I'm going to add there is that on outbureau.com, O-U-T-B-U-R-O.com, you can actually have a groups and, and multiple groups on outbureau.com. So those groups are similar to groups on Facebook or LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, they can be openly public groups where they get searched, indexed by Google and other search engines. They can be uh, private so that its uh, content is only viewable by the members. And there can even be secret groups. And, you know, one of the other things um, that I, I like about what you're doing is there's also some companies won't like the, the, the language that I'm about to use. Sorry, but that's almost like an LGBT union. Um, I mean, there's a sense of, of collaboration because the, the power or potential leverage that you have as collecting together is, you know, it, it's maybe, maybe that's not your intent, but, you know, when we work together and we stand together, we can make change together. Yeah, as it, you are fully right. Um, and our approach, this is diversity. So that means, do you really use, or the question, there's a question, do you really use all potentials within your companies or all the potentials on the market? Do you access the labor market with its full power? 
So do you look around everywhere where your potential candidates are? And do you speak to the consumer market in a way that you reach everybody? And for this, so to get the full market scale, you need a diversity. And it's funny, what we feel right now is that there, the management understood. And I think it's, I think it's, it's, it's a common uh, understanding right now. If you go five years back, maybe there were question marks, but now it's clear. Uh, we need diversity, we need inclusion. And it's also that the, the same that the labor side, the union side understand, oh yes, this is very important. And we have to put this into our uh, work program uh, so sponsoring diversity and uh, to make the companies more diverse so to make them more resilient and uh, more uh, compatible in the market and well, it's, it's, it's saying i do know this yeah this robs your market so you don't get your clients you, you, if you say i'm just uh, limited to this part or that part i don't speak with this or these uh, a uh, guy or guys no you're losing income you're losing profit and that cannot be so diversity is a must well absolutely. And this includes lgbt uh, uh, diversity as well well absolutely and study after study have uh, clearly shown and i've written and, and cited those studies on outbureau.com so if you're yeah. if you are if you're wondering about the the economic benefits of uh, diversity and inclusion um, lots of content out there but you can go right now and I will actually link uh, in the show notes uh, to one or two of my articles on clearly indicating in which I then link out to the studies that support it is that being diverse definitely impacts the bottom line of the company That's in a it. positive yep. manner and there's many reasons for that. People can be their authentic self. So they're coming with all of their cross intersectionalities uh, and bringing those ideas and those yep. past experiences to the table. Because, you know, if we only, if every single person in your company has a similar upbringing from the same, for example, from the same section of, of town, going to the same schools, going to the same churches, going to the same, you know, everything, you're, you're generally going to get, you know, one way of, of thinking. And so having people from different cultures, from different, uh, growing up from different countries with different, you know, different religions, different sexualities, all builds diversity and diversity brings different um, ideas and solutions to your problems and creative opportunities for your business. So lots of great information out there on, on yeah. that. Yeah, I see, I have one example. This is from Berlin. This is from our network. We discussed this in our network and What's well, a lemonade producer? I don't give the name. Everybody knows the company. And they discussed uh, about making uh, their markets uh, score bigger. And uh, one lesbian told them, hey, you are not in the LGBT market. No, this is possible. This is our market and we don't need to just discuss about we are present there, no problem. He said, you are not. Show us. So, and she showed, is that I have seen this and that and that and though, and you're not present. Oh, and how could you do this? I do this for you. And she did. So without her as a lesbian, or as a member of LGBT community, you can do it broader. They wouldn't have learned about the opportunity to grow within the LGBT IQ bars, restaurants, discos, and so on, festivals. So they burn a percent as they should have been. Okay. And, uh, okay, and she managed it. With her, they couldn't have managed it. And she gathered people in a team 
who said, okay, this is our uh, challenge and we tackle it. And they did it. And this is the big story. How to, yeah, how to make your earnings bigger just uh, with inclusion, with uh, more diversity and with their understanding, uh, which is not only focused to one community, but it's broadened. Well, absolutely. And to try to, uh, to kind of hit that, that message home for clarity, it's, it's kind of like back in the old days of mad men marketing in the 1950s when, you know, white heterosexual men were, were the, at the top of the marketing pyramid. Mm. And they were trying to create marketing for women's, you know, hygiene products. Mm. And, and, you know, how does that heterosexual straight man know how to, 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 to market to the female? Yep. Same goes. It's like if you are wanting to, for example, if you're a company, uh, a U.S.-based company or a German-based company, and you want to enter in the South American market, you want to go into Brazil and Argentina and so forth, you, you need to change your, your marketing uh, images, your music. You know, you can still have yeah, your, your, your branding, but you're going to have to give it that South American sound. You're going yep. to have to adapt your brand okay so yep. going in so taking that analogy that a, a major corporation wants to enter into the south american market they know they have to change their brand they have to alter their 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 messaging okay mm -hmm. just like if mm -hmm. you were wanting to go into india you're not going to you know show in india uh, in order to resonate with the, with the indian market you're not going to show a bunch of you know German or American blonde-haired, blue-eyed uh, people in your marketing advertisement. I, I mean, unless mm. there's purpose for it. If you want to connect with the locals, you're going to have images uh, of Indian people, right? Yeah. So yeah. it only makes sense, and hopefully, you're going to use someone who understands that market so that you are not coming across as as being condescending as as co-opting or, or i forget the right terminology but but that you are doing it in an authentic way that doesn't yep. actually yep. offend the, the 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 your target audience you know you don't want to offend that south american market you don't want to offend the, the 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 Indian people, right? By by inappropriately using cultural icons or religious icons that make you look like a complete idiot. So simil similarly, if you are going after or want to go after the LGBT market, to your point that you made, they thought they knew what they were doing, right? Because probably it was heterosexual people who thought that they were marketing to yeah. the LGBT community in its totality, when in reality, because they didn't know the LGBT community, therefore they didn't know that they were under-marketing, under-serving under yeah. it. And I, like for me, if I, I could not possibly do, I will admit this right now, I could not possibly create a marketing campaign to to target American no, okay. American football fans. Yeah. Because Could you mention? Yeah. I'm not I'm not a white heterosexual or whatever heterosexual football of and I know there's gay people who like fo American football and so forth too. But because I don't live in that community, I have no concept on how to do that, right? Yeah, that's right. But let me come back to one point you stressed. Being authentic and uh, that leads me to the discussion about pink washing. So uh, we discussed a lot how, how to approach a market. Yeah, maybe you are able to approach the market, but I am sure that the LGBTIQ market is intensely looking what is a company delivering for their employees. And so it's also, it's always the thing 
being authentic means uh, in the relationship to the market, but also in the internal relationships uh, to your employees, but uh, also to your suppliers. So, and, and I think this is a, a, a whole coherent system you have. You, all your relationships have to be inclusive. So to be convincing and to, to give uh, authenticity. And I tell you one story that was on World Pride last year in New York. And you know, a lot of things are doing DD Bank. So I know probably all the whole world knows, yeah, TDP is, uh, TD is on the side of uh, LGBTIQ community. It's, yes, I believe it. And they were present and they were in Miami and they were in, in New York. And oh, just we go to a TD bank and ask them for something. I, I, I do not remember really if you want to have money or I don't know. We had to do something in bank affairs and we entered. And there was a big rainbow picture within this, uh, this uh, uh, TD bank in New York City. And it, What's this? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is just our decoration here. So, and this is our identity. So, you, you, you go to this company and you have the rainbow. And probably not uh, only during Pride Months, but at least during Pride Months. And uh, yeah, this is uh, such an inspiring thing that you said, okay, this is the place to do the extra mile <laughs> or the extra dollar. So because you open up, you feel, oh, this is like at home and I'm ready to give some extra because I feel comfortable. So, and this is the thing how to, to convince people. And this makes it so important to to look all the time on your processes are they really inclusive or are they just in some sections uh, are they intersectional and uh, this is uh, the big challenge though to have all these things into mind and to understand okay i treat my employees this way i have my staff as my resource network i have my uh, market policy and all together makes you inclusive and diverse and brings you uh, an additional success on the market. And I think TD Bank learned about that. I, I, as I read, they had some mm, hard times at the beginning as they lost clients. They said, oh, is it worse to address LGBTIQ community? So we lose um, clients and customers. And, and finally, it turned upside down and they grew. Mm -hmm. And this is the story. Yes, well, well, and uh, absolutely. And, you know, times are changing. And so on the early adopters, um, you know, if that was 10, 15, you know, 20 years ago, you know, yes, because it was new and that might have upset some of the conservative, uh, traditionalist, fundamentalist um, customers. But, you know, Companies who see the vision, and of course, getting back to that almighty uh, dollar of inclusivity leads to uh, financial bottom line, because being inclusive is not excluding someone yep. else. Yeah, true. And so, you know, having, uh, and, you know, th there are some you know, some people that'll say, oh, well, why does being gay have to be celebrated? You know, why, why does there have to be all of this? Well, you know, uh, there's nothing to say that companies could not also during different months of the year have, you know, marketing and a special effort towards demonstrating their inclusive and welcoming for, yeah. for any other a portion of the community for for persons of color for females you know people have their you know their breast cancer months aut autism yeah. you know people with disabilities so you know I, the companies can put forth that that special additional marketing during those months and throughout the year yeah. it, it, as well uh, but but yes i think it's been um been awesome seeing it and and it does have to be as you mentioned that you know the 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 common term of pink washing um it does have to be more than just the logo 
uh, during the month of June. And although that's a step, it's not the first step that a company should take. They first should focus on how they, all of their policies and benefits for their employees. That is the first step that every employer should make on their journey toward LGBT inclusivity and marketing. Because as you pointed out, um, you know, the pink washing boy last year, uh, companies were just raked over the coals, as we say, um, meaning that uh, there was a study that showed that nearly 40% of the companies that were um, investigated who had rainbow flags as portion of their logo, 40% did not have, you know, full LGBT inclusive policies and benefits. And so they, they were viewed as, uh, you know, that's being, um, uh, well, pinkwashing is just that is when you just try to patronize, um, the LGBT community, because all you see is their wallet. All you see is yeah. the money. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Hi, okay, hubby. Okay. Hey, hey, you have to look at... Uh, hey, this is Klaus. <laughs> Hello, Klaus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, so very, very interesting. Yeah, tschüssi. Tschüss. Schöne Wochenende. Yeah, um, no, that's good. Tschüss, Wochenende. <laughs> So, um, very interesting. Well, uh, there, there's so much information uh, that we, you know, could, could yep. go down in rabbit holes that we could go go down on all of this. I, I think some of the, the, the core messages uh, here to take away from this uh, conversation is, is the uh, awareness of the Queer Staff Network of Berlin and, and the impact that that's doing within, within your community of the corporations, which has a far reaching um, impact, right? Because these are large corporations who aren't just operating within your geographic location of Berlin. And then um, how that impacts local businesses and and regional sized businesses, uh, I think is absolutely um, uh, amazing. So I, I, I want to charge, charge, charge with that. Um, uh, I would love to have that as, as part of a, a tool and a mechanism, um, you know, for uh, utilizing Out Bureau. I, I would appreciate if you guys would, would consider what we could do together to do that. And also how we can take what you're doing and, and, amplify the message and the success of what you're doing and have that replicated throughout the world. And hopefully leveraging outzero.com as a platform in which to facilitate that. Um, so, so I look forward to follow up conversations on, on how we can do that, how, um, if there's questions now. So, um, so everyone out there, um, give us a comment down below. You know, what have you, uh, are one, are you part of a company who has an employee resource group? Uh, let us know below. Uh, be clear on your answer, uh, a total answer, because I'm asking a few questions here. So let us know, uh, number one, if, if your employer has a, an employee resource group for the LGBT community, uh, the LGBT uh, folks, uh, and uh, uh, if you are involved with that. And uh, let us know in the comments below if you would be interested in participating in a similar project, and that is collaborate, collaborating with other LGBT uh, uh, professionals from other communities, because that is what the Out Bureau LinkedIn group is all about. That is what Out Bureau is all about. So uh, when you have that, um, make sure that you uh, create your profile on OutBureau, that's O-U-T-B-U-R-O.com, and then check out the groups. So once you create your profile, uh, you have to do at least uh, uh, 50 per 30% of your profile to be able to uh, activate groups. Uh, go into groups, uh, see if there is a location-based 
um, uh, group of uh, there, uh, maybe even uh, for your own company that or employer that you work for or your company that you own. Um, and if not, create a group uh, for your employees uh, and for your coworkers. And then what we can start to do is cross pollinate uh, with um, other groups. So a group for your employer organization, and then we can do regional groups. Uh, several are already started. And um, if I happen to have started a group, please, this is not about me. This is about you. So if you would like to become the, the group administrator, uh, so for example, a group on outhero.com for Berlin, if you would like to become the group administrator, just let me know. I can assign you to that, and it has a lot more capabilities than, than LinkedIn uh, groups do, trust me. And, we try to uh, find a story about this. <laughs> pardon? We will try to find a story about this. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, well, um, I need to get running. So I, uh, uh, so if you are on, um, and I'll be editing a little bit of this out. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, take a few moments and hit subscribe if you are on YouTube and be sure to click the bell to ensure that you are notified of new uh, episodes as they become available. Uh, well, thank you so much. Uh, I have very much enjoyed our conversation here, Marcus. And thank you. Thank looking, you. Yeah, such a cool concept. Uh, please make sure all of your team members, your core team members, and everyone uh, are aware of this uh, episode. Uh, tune in, they share will. it, <clears throat> share it widely. And, yeah, we uh, do. We do. <laughs> we spread <awesome>. it. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much. You have a wonderful weekend. Schönes Wochenende. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> the uh, same for you. Uh, thank you as well. A enjoy Miami heat. Uh, I will. Or Florida so, heat, wherever you are in the south at the moment. Florida heat and raining today. Well, thank, oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for tuning in. And everyone have a fantastic weekend. And we will see you on the next episode. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thank you indeed. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,